All right, today I'm gonna to tell the story of my first product that I ever launched on Amazon. And this product actually failed. I've never told this story before. So you're gonna learn what happened and how I learned from it and how I recovered to the point where I was able to still build a seven figure business on Amazon. Welcome back to the vlog. It's been a bit. Hope you haven't missed me too much. I'm working on getting on a better schedule. Uh, all the same stuff for me. Hopefully you guys have been popping into the live stream, getting an update from me, getting some information from me there. Uh, like I always say, you know, turn on that bell so you don't miss the, the live streams to ask me questions. Like I said in there, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this new company that I'm working on. I'll just leave it at that for this particular video, but something's in the works, something I'm more passionate about, something that I really wanna to grow to be massive. Should've been doing it all along. Uh, so that's been taking up a lot of my time, just mentally and planning wise, and I'm super excited about it. It's not a bad thing, it's an amazing thing. So that's to come, I'll be documenting the entire thing on this channel, talking super openly about it. So that's gonna be like a really exciting thing in the future for just my business career and for this channel. One quick thing before I get into the topic of today's video is that I want to point out this super sick painting that I got from Brett Stevens. We'll link him up everywhere right here. Super amazing artist. Let me show you this thing uh, up close. sent me that so thank you so much it's really amazing I love it my walls were super blank I just got a couple other things up as well finally we've lived here for like a year and a half now and finally making it ours it's stupid I should have a long time ago but this seriously like I really 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 love it so I really appreciate it guys please check him out follow him if you're interested in art stuff like that he's got pieces for sale stuff like that really really cool stuff all right so before I started selling private label on Amazon, building my own brands, doing FBA, all that stuff, some of you guys know the story, I was selling on eBay. I was reselling, I was buying used iPhones on Craigslist, sometimes repairing them, flipping them on eBay. That led me to eventually I was importing parts and like accessories in bulk, selling them on eBay. And that led me to my first thought of private label. This was before people were even calling it private label. This was just like the intuitive thing to do. It's like you're selling products. Well, the ones at the shelf at Target are really just private label. Like any brand you see is really just a brand that's created. It doesn't necessarily mean that the product was literally engineered from scratch. It just means that they labeled it. So that was intuitive to me. And I knew this Amazon thing was happening and it was intuitive that getting to the top of Amazon, having a bunch of reviews, that was gonna be a success. And that was why I first ever got so hyped on this Amazon opportunity. Now, that ties in because I was already selling phone parts on eBay and, and phone stuff. So I figured, let me learn the ropes of Amazon and test one of these products on Amazon. So I don't even really normally think of this as my first private label product, but really it was. And that's why I'm telling this story now and I'll even tell you what the product is and all of that. Because really I think of my the product after this one as my true first launch. That was the one that became my first real brand. And this one was more of a way for me to take something that I was already sort of sourcing, let me try private labeling it, let me learn the Amazon FBA process. How do I do barcodes? How do I get it shipped into Amazon? You know, how does everything in Amazon work? I, it was, I, was, I didn't understand it at all. I didn't know what I was doing. So I thought, let me try this. I can source these cheaply. So. I was already selling on eBay uh, the tempered glass uh, screen protectors for phones, like for iPhones. Uh, I was actually one of the first people selling the tempered glass ones back when those first started popping, uh, but on eBay, not on Amazon. Um, and I was doing that for a year or two before I did the Amazon thing. So I wasn't first on Amazon, but I was early on eBay, like right when those tempered glass ones started getting popular. So 
I'd already been selling on eBay, on eBay. I thought, let me brand this, let me make it look great. I did this really cool packaging. It was like this craft brown paper with this bright green, it looked super cool. Um, it, was, it, it, it was pretty nice. And uh, I launched that product as my first attempt to learn the ropes of Amazon. Now, how did it go? It went okay, but ultimately it was a failure, I would say. I didn't continue, I didn't reorder. Uh, I think I sold through maybe 500 pieces or a thousand pieces of two different styles, um, something like that. And I probably, I might have actually made some money. I don't know, I don't remember. I mean, this was like over, this was almost four years ago at this point. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers at this point just because it was like four years ago, but I might have made some money overall, but it wasn't worth continuing because it did well for some time, but then it ultimately just died out and I just kind of sold it slowly over a number of years. So it did go well at the beginning. This was back when giveaways were the way you did it. You would just give away a bunch of products, you'd rank, you'd start selling. It was super easy. It was the wide open time of Amazon and that product I just thought, I'd throw it up. I never, let me add, I never expected that product to really do well. I wanted to use that product specifically as a learning opportunity to roll that experience into the next brand that I would be taking much, much more seriously. So that is why this was actually a success for me, even though the product did fail. And even though I didn't continue selling this product and making profit over years, as I ended up doing with my other products, I did profit from it in a roundabout way because it taught me what works and what doesn't and those are still some things that I am using today. And that is something that you guys may be able to do as well in, in your businesses is, you know, getting your feet wet and just getting this going, that's the that's where 99% of people drop off. Like it's so cliche, but like just to say like you have to actually, you know, everyone says like take action, just do something, but like it really is true. So learn the ropes, do that. It, that could be really a good place for a lot of people to start. It's just like, what's the easiest thing for you to get going on? Even if you know it might not be this huge thing for you, but I learned a lot from that and rolled it into the next one. So now let me tell you why that product really didn't work for Amazon. So some products just really won't work on Amazon. Like it just doesn't make sense. You gotta just stay away from them at all costs. And I've said this before, those are the things that are super fads, things that are just like gonna just shoot up and die, just stay away. Now phones and phone accessories, that's just like the easiest entry product. It's the most saturated thing. It's like the worst idea. Like don't try to sell phone cases. Don't try to sell lightning cables. Don't try to sell screen protectors. Like these are just known as the saturated products that are definitely sold directly by manufacturers. Margins are super tight. It's just terrible for absolutely every reason. And I knew that, but I was already selling them on eBay. So I figured I'd give it a shot. So it just doesn't work on Amazon because it is just so generic and there is just so many competitors and it's all really price dependent. Like nobody is really buying those based on brand except for some really major brands that have really, really succeeded. Uh, I don't even know the phone brands anymore. Like, well, like Anchor for the, for the battery packs. I don't think they do the screen protectors anymore. They did actually at the time, they were one of my few competitors. Uh, and now they're like, I don't know, probably worth like infinity dollars. So that's cool for them. But if you're not one of those top name competitors, uh, it's just not a space. It's just not a space. I don't even know really how to explain it, but you just need to know it when you see it. And the phone accessory space is just not a good one to go after. Now, that's not to say that if you have a really unique angle and a really unique product that it's impossible. Sometimes I, I like to take those things with a grain of salt. Sometimes when everybody says don't go there, there might still actually be some opportunity there. But for the most part, that's just a cliched, quintessential don't do this type of product and it just doesn't work. So now what do I look for now or what did I learn from that to roll into my other brands? It's been like full summer here again. I missed it. All right, so that taught me that on the, my next product, I needed to figure out how can I stand out? And that right now, currently, is still one of my core things when I'm looking at getting into a new product or brand is that I need a way to stand out. I need a way to be unique or else why would somebody buy you? If, if you were looking in the search results yourself and you were looking for the product, why would you choose yours and not the others? That's the question that I ask myself. If you can't answer that, then you don't have a good value proposition. You don't stand out and there's no reason that somebody should you choose your product or the other one. So if you're just looking for a pity sale and you think that your business should succeed because you want it to, that's just not gonna work. 
So you need to stand out in some way and you need to bring a better value in some way. That doesn't mean price, that, that, can, mean, that can mean higher price, but better value. So, you know, is your product designed better? Does your product have an added function? Is it bigger, is it smaller, is it higher quality? Is it thicker, is it lighter, is it heavier? I mean, like, what is it that applies to your product and how could it be better? That became very key to me and that's something that I brought with me to every, pretty much every product that I've done. In some cases, I'll just find random opportunities, but in most cases, I'm looking for how can I improve upon something, even if it is minor. You don't have to improve on absolutely everything, but you need something to stand out or else, like I said, why choose you? If you can't answer that, neither can your customers. So that became crucial to me. And also the ability to, this was the same time that you guys have heard this from me a million times, but the ability to build a product line. Not that the screen protector one doesn't suit that, but it's less brandable unless you're one of those top tier brands. And so from then I really looked for stuff that from the beginning, from choosing that first product, what would be the fourth, fifth, 10th, 15th product in that product line? And do they serve the same market or how are they related? Are they the same materials? Are they the same function? Are they the same uh, you know, problem that they're helping people with? Is it the same just type of person that would be interested in the products? What is the thread that connects all of these products? And um, so yeah, those are two things that I, those aren't my only things for product criteria, but those are the two that really stood out to me from this mistake with the tempered glass screen protectors that was my first semi-product launch on Amazon. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap up. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna wrap it up there. We're about to head to Erewhon, our favorite place, get some healthy dessert. Uh, so yeah, I hope that was helpful. Hope that seeing that story a bit further than you've probably heard it yet, well, definitely heard it yet, because I don't think I've really told it in that way, and hope you can apply it to what you're working on. So I don't think there's any other real updates or stuff like that, so if you're not in the Facebook group already, you can get into that in the description. There's a bunch of stuff down there, and I'll see you in the next video.